Hey guys, welcome back to Maison Molly. I'm Ash Molly, and today I'm going to be answering all of your questions about my epic trip to Paris. Today we're going to talk where I stayed, what I did, all of the tax purchasing discounts, designer questions. You've asked the questions, I've got all the answers. Of course guys though, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe if you haven't already to my channel. You guys can also find me over on Instagram and TikTok where I make daily videos there as well. If that's something you're interested in, you can find me right here. Let's start the Q&A. Alrighty, so as you guys all know, your girl went to Paris last month. One month ago, I was living my best Parisian life, but now I'm back and you guys did submit a lot of questions and so I'm here to share those answers with you. Let's just hop right into it. I loved the first question. Someone asked, when are we going back? When are we going back to Paris? Um, I hope that it will be in 2023. I actually loved Paris. It like, that vacation superseded like what I thought it was gonna be and Hopefully 2023 will see me in Paris again. Hotels, where would you recommend for the first time visitors, those of us with tweens? So where to stay? Um, Paris is made up of, I'm probably gonna say this wrong, I think they're called like eridicimals, it's a very French word, but if you look on a map, it'll say like 9th ARR or 10th ARR. Um, I stayed between the 8th and the 9th ARR, so I don't know which one exactly um i will tell you guys where i stayed i stayed at a hotel called the hotel bedford and to be honest it wasn't a super swanky hotel or anything like that it was referred to me by my director at work because she goes there quite a few times a year for the buy and that's where they stay and she suggested it and again it wasn't like a posh hotel but it was really nice it was spacious but what i loved about it the most was how close it was to everything so for example all of the shopping was like an eight to ten minute minute walk away all of the designers so hermes chanel dior gucci i would just walk straight out on my street and everything would be right there in addition to that there were a lot of really great restaurants in that area again i could literally walk like two minutes to a nice restaurant um, and that worked really really well for us that was the first hotel that we stayed in um, for five days and then we went back to Paris we stayed at the Sofitel um, for two nights because I wanted like a really posh hotel with like a great Eiffel Tower view and I paid a lot more for that hotel and I didn't like it as much as the Bedford because one there weren't as many restaurants around two shopping wasn't as easily accessible and I wouldn't suggest it because I just don't think that it lived up to the hype, the luxury of it all. It was nice, the room was nice, but not worth it. Yeah, it just wasn't the jam as that hotel in the 8th slash 9th ARR. Uh, the next question was how did you decide what area to stay in near shopping centers or museums? So I think I just kind of answered that. It was just word of mouth, like someone suggested it and it worked out really well for me. The staff was really nice. Um, and again, I really truly love that hotel just because of how close it was to everything. So if you guys look it up on the map, like it was like uh, everything was like within a 10 minute Uber ride too. So like if I wanted to go to the Louvre, go to the Louvre, it was 10 minutes away by Uber. Everything was super close. Next question is, did you use a travel agent? Guys, I am a travel agent. I'm not a travel agent, but I'm a Virgo. We love to plan things. I thrive on planning trips. So no, I didn't use an agent. I just did everything myself. Um, and I'll let you guys know a little bit more about that in a moment. What area did you shop in Paris so I can plan mine? So my favorite area to shop in Paris was probably Avenue Montaigne. I loved it. That's where the Dior store was. And then um, if you guys haven't seen my shopping vlog video, I'll link it right here. But Avenue Montaigne also has everything. So there's a Dior store, a Chanel, Fendi, YSL, Versace, there's Gucci down the road, LV around the corner, like everything is right there. It's a great shopping area. And then I also like to shop along Hoosman. If I'm wrong, I will 
put the exact street but that's where I went to the Gucci store and again it's a lot more darling a little bit quieter and there's a lot of shops there ar around there as well I also shopped at Gallery Lafayette I really enjoyed that that area is a little bit more crowded it's like when you walk down from Hoosman like 10 minutes down you'll bump into Gallery Lafayette but um, it's a beautiful department store it's nice and cool in there um, there are tons of designers so I would suggest there as well oh not to forget I also shopped around Plaza Vendome that's where I went to Goyard and I went to the Louis Vuitton store there as well um, really picturesque really nice but I, I presume obviously there's lots of stores around there but I just didn't get to explore that area as much of everything I do think that like shopping along Hoosman Houseman was my favorite because it was just really like darling and very quiet someone said is Paris glamorous or overhyped as people say it is Paris is a vibe I don't know it's just something in the air it's not that it's glamorous right because I think of like LA to be glamorous it's just very romantic and very subtle but just it just has a charm about it and that's what I love about Paris I think I fit in perfectly all the ladies there are cute everyone wears their dresses and their sneakers and it's just a very darling place if I can think of a word to use um, so I don't think that it's overhyped at all it was exactly what I thought it was gonna be and I quite enjoyed it Alrighty, Ayrton, so someone had a question for you too. They wanted to know, what was your favorite part about going to London and Paris? My favorite part of going to Paris is going to the Eiffel Tower. The Eiffel Tower? Yeah. Okay, why did you like it so much? I like it so much because, like, because since the Eiffel Tower is so high, you can see the whole city of Paris. You can see the whole city of Paris. Is there anything else you want to tell them about Paris? That um, I also like the the buses where you get to travel around the town okay it's, it's pretty cool it's pretty cool and would you like to go to paris again or are you kind of done with that city i'm kind of done with that city oh my god really so if i go to paris again in 2023 are you coming with me or are you done with it i'll come with you you'll come with me all right we'll say bye to everyone see ya what <laughs> was your greatest memory from the trip hmm I don't know I just had so many good memories like I love the day that I went shopping with my girlfriends we shopped all day long that was so much fun but then it was really special that first night we got there we walked to the Eiffel Tower and experiencing like the first light up at 10 o'clock like that was magical because you know when you go to Paris you want to experience the Eiffel Tower um, shopping at Dior was a whimsical magical experience like I absolutely loved that store I can't wait to go back to Dior um so yeah every a little bit of everything the food the culture just the whole trip was a magical experience how was the food oh my gosh the food was amazing I feel like we had a lot of Italian food while we were there but I definitely did traditional like steak frites I did crepes I did croissants the pastries are next level the pasta is next level the food is great and even though it's like heavier things like you feel like you're eating pasta I don't know what they put in their food over there but you just feel lighter um, yeah the food was pretty amazing like I think actually when I go back next time I probably won't shop as much because I can't be dropping that amount of money every time but I think next time it will be more of a food tour so that I can explore more restaurants and more food uh, someone asked did my family go back to San Diego while I did Paris again no I wasn't gonna fly back by myself like we went to Paris together then we went to London together we came back from London spent two days in Paris and then we all flew home together gluten-free options at restaurants to be honest I didn't really look into that because oh I shifted a little bit I didn't really look into gluten-free options because I'm not gluten-free um, and there's so much bread there none of that bread looked gluten-free though so maybe that's something I can look into and report back next time I go to Paris no question just so jealous thank you for sharing an insta i was so fun it was so much fun watching 
Uh, you're welcome. It was fun for me to share with you guys because I was equally as excited to share everything with you guys. Uh, was it super expensive to go there? How long in advance did you plan your trip? Yes, it was super expensive to go there. Um, but my mindset was this is a trip I've wanted to take for so many years and it kept getting delayed either because of COVID or like before 2018, I wasn't a citizen of the US. I'm from Guyana and my passport isn't really strong and I didn't want to have to like get visas to go to France and go to like the UK and all that. So it was put off for quite some time and when I finally had the time to do it, which was this year, I had to do it. I got a new job, so I'm definitely making more this year. I have my YouTube income and things like that and so it was the perfect time. It was very expensive, especially doing it for three people, but it was definitely, definitely worth it. I do think that you can go on a more economical route. I would suggest if you want to be more economical, definitely plan way ahead. Like I'm already looking at Paris tickets and they are a lot cheaper now than they were when I purchased our tickets. Um, our tickets were 1500 per person now you can find a ticket for like 600 bucks so i think if you purchase well in advance you can also stay at an economical hotel the first hotel that we stayed at it was about 250 a night which i don't think that's really that bad and if you're going with a friend and you split it i think you can go to paris for 10 days like we did for maybe about three thousand dollars which i don't think that is that bad if you are paying for a hotel and for your lodging is there a big price difference on luxury um, let's talk about this. Yes, there is. I personally don't believe that I will ever purchase another luxury piece in the US again, anything over $2,000 at least. Um, just because it's so, I don't want to use the word cheap, but it's so much more economical to shop there. Um, I say, for example, if a bag here in the US is $4,000, in Paris, that same bag is going to be maybe about $2,800 and then you're going to get the tax back on that. And so you're probably going to spend about $2,500 in Paris for a bag that's $4,000 here in the U.S. So between the difference in price and the tax back, you just can't really beat it. How did you travel between London and Paris? Of course, you can fly, you can drive, you can take a train, but we took the Eurostar. The Eurostar is a high-speed train that travels between London and Paris. Guys, it was only two hours and 15 minutes, and I would suggest purchasing the ticket way ahead of time. The further out you purchase the ticket, the cheaper it is. I think I bought our hours like maybe three weeks before we went, so I paid about $600 for three round trip tickets, but it's definitely worth it. Like it's super fast, you're there in two hours, the Eurostar is the way to go. What are your top recommendations for things to do for first time visitors? So of course, the first time you go to France, you have to see the Eiffel Tower, you have to go to the Louvre, it's a museum there that's like amazing you have to check out the shops you don't have to buy but check out the luxury shops they're really fun you have to try steak frites you have to eat croissants you just cannot not go to france and have their pastries and i think you just kind of like have to explore the city it's a beautiful city um there's so much to do but those are like the top of the list eiffel tower louvre croissants did you bring an empty suitcase for all of your purchases? For this trip, I, we had like, you can have a carry-on and you can have one free checked luggage. My husband and my son travel pretty light, so neither of them took a checked luggage. I took a large checked luggage. And in that, I also had like my son's clothes and things like that. Um, coming back, because I did buy so much, I took all of like my dirty clothes, all of my son's dirty clothes, and I put it in our checked luggage. And then I used our carry-on, so my carry-on and his carry-on for all of my luxury goods. I'm really happy that I did this because honestly, our checked luggage got lost. And if all of my luxury things had gotten lost, yeah, no. So it was a great idea to check all of the dirty things and then carry all of my luxury things in um, carry on with me. Rate the experience and the coffee. 
Uh, Paris on a scale of 1 to 10, I'm going to give it a 15. I loved Paris. Um, London on a scale of 1 to 10. I like London a lot. Like, I'm not in a rush to go back, but I liked it a lot. It's a great city. Um, and it felt a little bit at home, too, as I had referenced and told you guys in my Nespresso vlog. Um, if you guys, if you guys haven't seen that, I'll link it right here. But because, um, I am Guyanese, we were owned by the British, so we use a lot of the same words, same terminologies. We say, pardon me. Everybody said, pardon me there, and it just made me so happy um but i think that paris definitely has that whimsical charm that london doesn't have london is a little bit more rugged but it's very cool i liked it i would rate london as seven out of ten you did sit, ask about the coffee coffee was better in london because the french do not do iced coffee and you guys know i'm a nice coffee girl i just couldn't find iced coffee hardly anywhere in france um, whereas it was really abundant in London. But outside of the iced coffee factor, coffee was great in both places, 10 out of 10. Someone asked, how much did you budget for a trip like this? To be honest, I didn't really budget. I didn't budget. Um, because it was just something that I wanted to do, and I wanted to do it big. Like, I didn't want to worry about oh, I can't do this or I can't do that. And I understand that some people do have to budget. And I'm telling you, my next trip to France, it will be budgeted. But for this particular trip, I wanted it to be epic. And so I didn't really spare any expenses. But again, like let's say I did budget and I have a family of three. I think that a family of three can do Paris for maybe realistically speaking you probably still need like ten thousand dollars because you have to buy plane tickets and then you're there for 10 days and you do 250 a night the hotel alone is going to be the chunk of it right now if you want to do a little bit of shopping of course meals trains train to london like whatever else you want to do so comfortably i think for ten thousand dollars like a family of three can go to paris and even London. The next question was, did you have to save for such a beautiful trip? I guess, yeah, I guess I did. I didn't save for the trip in particular, I just generally save. So I used some of the money that I have saved, I had saved throughout this year. Um, but I also got a really great credit card. I got the Chase Sapphire Preferred and they I got it just for this trip. So they pretty much have this deal if you spend $4,000 and I think they still do if you, if you spend four thousand dollars within the first three months you'll get um a thousand you'll get one hundred thousand in points back which really equates to about a thousand dollars so that just seemed like a no-brainer to me because the plane tickets for three people alone were gonna be that price point um so i instantly just with buying the plane tickets i got that money back and then you just get so many points for that card for travel and restaurants so i just easily stacked up points and i think for that card alone within like the month of having it i earned about two hundred thousand points which is like two thousand dollars back for this entire trip so when i went to miami i used those points to book my plane ticket and it was like a free flight you know what i mean so i think you just have to be smart of course you save but get a good credit card that's going to work for you you don't want to be using like your savings or a debit card and you're not earning anything off of it so i was able to use that card and then just pay it off from my savings what was the conversion rate for pricing pricing on luxury goods so right now the euro and the dollar it's one on one one euro is equal to one us dollar so it's actually pretty great at times in the past you know when we weren't going through this recession and all of that the euro um the dollar you would spend a lot more so let's say i don't i'm not giving you exact numbers here but let's say you spent a thousand euros that might equate out to about 1300 us dollars right whereas now if you spend a thousand euros it's probably going to be like a thousand and ten us dollars so it's a great time to shop in paris everything you got from the pharmacy skincare supplements please and thank you oh my goodness i will try to put that in like a video of some sort for you guys because i got so much from the pharmacy 
but hold on I just ran into my bathroom if I had to share some of my favorite things from the pharmacy really quick fast it would be these oils this one is like a rose scent and then this one is like a shine so if I can show you guys I love this I don't want to spritz it on my leather sofa but it spritz on I'll show you guys off camera it leaves you with a beautiful glow it's a nice oil for your skin I got it in both the rose and in the shimmer so these are my faves and then I've been using this a lot if you guys can see it is uh Europe your Yuri age U R I A G E it's a cleansing oil i really like this it lathers really nicely in the shower um, but it leaves your skin feeling super soft and smooth other things i got that were really good i got like my caudalie serum and moisturizer the serum in the u.s it's about 75 dollars but in at the pharmacy it was about 42 or so I spent maybe about $500 in the pharmacy and I got like so many things. I don't know when I will even need to shop like skincare and body care again. Did you feel like there's more to do in London or Paris? Going to both in November. Um, they were just different. What I did love more about London is the nightlife. I feel as though when I went out at night in London, all the restaurants were still open. It was still bustling. I felt very, very safe. There was a lot of people out and about. Whereas I think Paris kind of shuts down a little bit quieter. That by 11, the streets are quiet. Everyone's kind of in. Um, so I definitely like that about London. I can't say that I know which city has more to do because this was my first trip and I literally did all of the tourist things so for like london i just did like the london eye and i went to nespresso and i did a bus tour so i could see all the sites and i kind of did the same for paris so i didn't dig deep into each city like i didn't do the nightlife or a, an abundance of restaurants or anything like that so hold that question i'll let you guys know the next time will you make a video with your shopping bags from paris and london you guys know i did make that video it was kind of epic i'll link it right here if you haven't seen it yet best and worst part of the trip um best part of the trip just being able to experience a different culture a different way of life it's very different from the u.s both places um, and I truly enjoy that. I just enjoy immersing myself in new cultures, new food, and that was great. Um, worst part of the trip, I think it's a hard time to travel, especially with everybody traveling. So that's usually where people run into the most issues, like your baggage getting lost or missing your flight. That part is not fun, but it's a part of traveling. So I accept it and I kind of just roll with the punches. Did you feel safe wearing designer items and with shopping bags? I did. So when I was done shopping, I kind of took an Uber back to my hotel, but it's a normal city. It's bustling. There's lots of people out wearing designer. There's lots of people out shopping. I felt perfectly safe. I'm from a big city. I'm from New York City. So I don't know if that makes me feel safer because, you know, New York City can be kind of crazy at times. Um, so I never didn't feel safe I felt comfortable and yeah how do they treat families and people of color I heard they're not the friendliest I will be 100% honest I didn't run into any issues while I was there of people not treating us nicely the one thing I will say is that everybody there doesn't speak English and I want to say this before I get into my point um I'm 100% cool with that I feel as though people pretended that they didn't speak English, but I'm 100% cool with that because who am I to go to somebody else's country and speak English and expect them to speak it back? Um, I, I don't think that's right. I don't have those expectations, but I do feel as though people didn't want to speak in English, so they would just be like, I don't speak English. So outside of that though, everybody was really kind. I don't know if though people were kind because I was like, oh, I work at this, like when I was shopping, especially, I use it to my leverage. I would say like, oh yeah, I work at da 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 da, and people would be like, oh my God, really? And then, we vibed and all of my experiences were great so i don't know if it would be different if you went in and you're like oh i'm trying to buy this bag and how they would treat you um 
yeah but overall it was really good the only time someone was rude was when we were coming back from london the french customs officer like every place we had been so far we gave all three of our passports and they would just take all three look at us keep it moving and he was just kind of like why are you giving me all three do you did do you give all three in the u.s and we're like yeah and then when we were leaving france i i didn't know what to do like the french officer i gave her i was like can i give you all three and she's like yeah of course so i think that one guy was just a douchebag and that was it that was probably like the worst of experiences but overall we had a great time didn't run into any problems um being a woman of color or being a family of color would love to hear about what you ate um so our favorite place well you know my husband's favorite place to eat was this place called it was this place called pompeii again it was suggested to me by my director she's italian this restaurant is italian and it was amazing it wasn't like a fine dining place it was kind of like a little hole in the wall but the food was authentic and it was really really good pizzas pastas everything so i definitely would suggest that place i'll link it somewhere here for you guys so if you go to paris you can check it out but we were pretty low-key i kind of focused a lot on the sites and focused on shopping so we didn't have like a lot of like lavish um dinners and things like that because we would literally just like grab food and kind of go was it a culture shock coming to europe i feel like we live very different differently over here and then she put a uk flag and a french flag um again going to the uk wasn't culture shock at all because my country was owned by the british so we have a lot of the same customs like when i was growing up so for me it was very darling and then in france not really no i mean the culture is different the city looks different it's a different language but i think it's people we all speak the same language of smiling and of love and things like that so it wasn't crazily different different food different language yeah overall pretty good like i, I didn't see that many differences which site or resource did you use to book flights and hotels at a reasonable price? I think I booked our London hotel on Expedia. I booked both French hotels through the hotel directly. Flights, I booked it through my credit card because that was a big chunk and I really wanted to get those points. So I booked it through like um, Chase Sapphire, like Ch Chase Travel. Um, and that was it. You can kind of shop around and see which will work best for you, but a little bit of everything. I didn't book everything together because I was like, what if I want to change my hotel or if I want to change a flight? I didn't like the idea of this trip, like everything being together. So I booked everything separately. But sometimes booking together will cause your trip to be less since I was going to multiple locations though like going to France, then going to the UK, and then coming back to France. It just seemed better to book everything separately. All right, so I think those were all of the questions that you guys asked. Is there anything that I have to add? Not really, you guys did a really good job of answering questions. I think I've said this a thousand times over. I think that London, Paris is definitely a trip that's worth making. And Paris 2023 is definitely already on my to-do list. Guys, as always, thank you for stopping by Maison Molly. Drop it in the comments down below. Let me know if you have any other questions. Maybe I missed something. I'd be happy to answer it down below. If you haven't already subscribed to my channel, go ahead, do so. Subscribe. We have a lot of fun around here. We talk a little bit of luxury, some coffee, all of the fun things. But as always, guys, thank you for stopping by Maison Molly, and I'll see you guys next time.